Comics Plus, what's up, Akasan? Uh, is here. We're gonna do this real quick as we're waiting for Loki, so I can get this out the way. A lot of you guys have been messaging me about this. This is Black Lion saying the Flash season seven is utterly unwatchable. So we're gonna watch this, and then I'm gonna be setting up for Loki at the same time. Let's go. For years now, the Flash's fandom has said the same thing over and over again. The show hasn't been good since season two. It hasn't recaptured the magic of the first two seasons, and the current season is the worst one yet by far. Now, this is something that I never really agreed with. I always thought season three was a lot better than people gave it credit for. I mean, looking back, it seems like most people do now agree. Season three wasn't that bad. In fact, it was pretty good. Yep. I always thought season four was the best looking season of The Flash, and it has my favorite episode, Enter Flash Time. And while season five definitely looks pretty bad and it has a bad villain, the season long storyline isn't bad at all. However, now that we're in season seven, I have to agree with what most people are saying that this is the worst season of The Flash, but not only that, I find it to be so much worse than anything The Flash has ever given us before the crisis that it's utterly unwatchable. Everything up until the crisis was at least watchable. Some of it wasn't great, some of it was great, but most of it was something that I did enjoy and I was attached to the characters. But ever since the crisis happened, the second half of season 6, and especially the god-awful season that we're having right now, season 7, I have trouble getting through every single episode. I'm having trouble getting through even certain scenes. I've skimmed through a lot of it. And the main reason for this, or there are a couple main reasons, but I think the biggest Too many one characters. is terrible, terrible supporting cast. Yep. So I no longer care about really a single character on the show except for Barry Allen and maybe Iris West just because she's important to the Flash's universe. But in terms of the show itself, it's really just Barry Allen, which is detrimental to a show that really, really likes to put its main character on the sidelines, really, really likes to focus on the supporting cast, which is just awful for the show yep and this exactly also the characters who were at least at one point fan favorites and beloved characters like cisco ramon who was amazing in seasons one and two he had no connection to the flash in the comics but they really really connected him to it they really made him a staple of the flash at least in this world but ever since like season three ended cisco has done literally nothing interesting and while his heartfelt goodbye in season seven was well done he should have that, that episode really should have came out in like season four or something because ever since then he's done nothing interesting exactly not to mention not to mention he just literally comes back four goddamn episodes three to four goddamn episodes later what a waste and it just feels like he's around for the sake of just the fact that he's been around from the beginning. He should have been gone. This also goes for Caitlyn, but instead of doing nothing interesting, What's up, her storylines have been just awful since season three. I love the idea of Caitlyn, one of Barry's best friends, turning evil and turning it to Killer Frost because of that uh, dynamic and that emotional impact that that can have. But then they went back on that, and in season four, she became a good guy. And ever since then, this is an idea that I've hated. It's been going and down. she's always yeah. been a character, yeah. basically ever since season three, that the writers just keep on running out of things to do for her. Yeah. So they keep on creating new drama, new storylines. Like, recently in season seven, this has been the worst ever. They've given Frog yeah. a lot to do in season seven. Chill, babe. I don't think that's a good thing. Chill, babe. They split Caitlyn and, and, and Frost up, which has been really weird. But also, that's definitely not the worst thing. The worst things are the Trial of the Killer Frost storyline, which, like, really, the CW had the gall to lecture us and the people of the show and the characters in the show about giving people second chances when they... Right! Hartley Sawyer right! The show because of something that he tweeted, like, ten years ago. It's honestly so ridiculous, but that's not even the worst thing we got from Frost this season. The worst thing is Chillblain which is the most sexualized character in the Arrowverse ever somehow, and his relationship slash weird romance that he's had with Frost. It's so creepy. It's so weird. I don't understand what they're doing with the character. They had this idea to make her a good guy in season four, and ever since then, they've just done the weirdest things ever. All of that shit they're talking about, about over-sexualizing women and blah, 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 and all this sort of PC stuff, literally, they're doing it with this chill bang dude. And I don't think that was ever a good idea in the first place. I mean, they took a character named Killer Frost, who is a killer, and they thought, yeah, let's make that character a good guy. Captain Cold makes sense, I guess. He's always had a code. He doesn't have killer in his name. Other characters make sense, but Killer Frost, I mean, come on. Let's be real here. This never would have worked, and it really doesn't. And Season 7 has had the worst of it so far. 
So Ralph was unjustly kicked off the show, which really, really pissed me off because it was just so unfair to Ralph and Sue's actors yep. because they really yep. were promised much more than they end up getting. Yep. But maybe it's for the best. Maybe these characters would have fell victim to what the rest of the cast has fell victim to, which is just turning into bad characters. Yeah, it's already but, happening. Uh, I yeah. do think they had a lot of potential, maybe even in their own spinoff show. But it really makes the CW look even worse than it already does because they have all these storylines of villains or bad people turning good. Even Ralph himself was a crooked cop who turned into a hero. But then they have the goal to kick somebody off the show because of something he tweeted 10 years ago. It's something that really, really pissed me off. I never really talked about it in a video, but it's something that I really, really just, I don't respect the CW at all. Yep. And that's one of the reasons. But anyway, there's also a Joe who hasn't done anything interesting in years, <laughs> and Cecile, yep. who is pretty annoying, and she she is super overused. Like Human plot device. That's Cecile's power. You don't know what the problem is? You don't know what's going on? You don't know how to the, the, keep the story going? Cecile, walk into that room and read somebody's emotion. She should not have nearly as many storylines or screen time as she does. And her appearance rate should really just be relegated to whenever there's a trial or whenever we see Joe at home, and that's really it. And she definitely should have never gotten powers, because why the hell does she have powers? Then we get to two characters whose existences baffle me, which is Chester and Allegra. <laughs> Chester is obviously supposed to be a replacement for Cisco. He's always behind the monitor, coming up with the plans. He's the nerdy one. He makes all these pop culture references. He's a bit awkward. He's just Cisco 2.0, but Cisco, like I said, he didn't really have anything to do past season four. His existence also didn't really need to happen past season four. So to replace him in season seven, or I guess season six, with a worse version of the character, it makes no <laughs> sense whatsoever. And Chester has really added nothing to the show. He's in fact worse in the show to the point where, I mean, you forget like important things about the character because who the fuck cares about him? <laughs> <laughs> read it a couple weeks ago where somebody asked why Chester doesn't use his black hole powers or could he use his black power? I don't remember him having those powers. It blew my mind because I completely forgot about that. I completely forgot he has the black hole powers because one, he never uses them, but also two, because I don't give a crap about this character. I don't care about anything he's done. Yo, I legit, for I, for I legit forgot that they didn't have some powers. Oh my God. Or anything he ever will do. <laughs> Then there's Allegra, who is even worse somehow. <laughs> so I think we can all agree that Allegra is a pointless character, yep. right? I mean, whenever she is on screen, she's just in the background doing nothing. There are a couple episodes where she just doesn't appear and nobody noticed because, I mean, it has the same effect <laughs> of her just being in the background. She has no personal relationships that are interesting, no good dynamics that would bring any interest to the show, and her storylines are completely forgettable. Which all came together to episode four. What's up, 700? Rayo Deleuze, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is the lowest rated episode on IMDb ever. <laughs> Despite the fact that, I mean, Love's a Battlefield is worse. It's just that, yep. that episode features Barry, Barry and, Allen, yeah. and all the other characters that we care about. This episode is not an episode of The Flash. It's an episode about Allegra, where, I mean, even inside the storyline, there's some bad acting, some bad effects, some bad writing. I mean, terrible writing. But, I mean, just the fact that it features Allegra, a character clearly nobody cares about, is why it's the lowest rated episode of this show ever. Thank you for the host, Double. Whenever there's a storyline involving one of the characters that doesn't directly involve Barry Allen, I tend to want to skip it, and I yep. do skip it. Just look at the latest Godspeed episode. Everything that had to do with Allegra and her cousin and Caitlin yep. working on her with the surgery... I skipped through all yep. of that, and I don't feel like I missed anything. I didn't even watch to do it. With Frost yep. and Chillblane, I didn't skip it, but I cringed through it somehow. <laughs> I managed to get through it despite it being some of the worst TV I've ever seen, and that was in one of the what is generally considered the better better episodes, episodes of the season. Yeah. Where so many people were like, "Oh, this is a return to form," but no. When two out of the three storylines are either things that you want to skip through or you cringe through, yep. and then even the main storyline is not as good as it could be. That episode isn't good. The right. episode 15 at the uh, enemy, enemy at the Gates is not a good episode. It's just good for season 7 somehow. Correct. And that really goes to show how awful Diamonds season on 7 poop. has been, how unwatchable Diamonds the show on is poop. at this point. Now, I don't think that this would be as big of a problem. Like, again, if the supporting cast is better, obviously that would be very helpful. But also, I think that if the supporting cast's role was diminished, yep. if they had less storylines and Barry had more of a front and center role 
then also the show would be would be better. But I don't think either of those things would solve uh, the other big problem, which is the character of Barry Allen and how seven years in and seven seasons in, he still feels like a sidekick. He still feels like he hasn't come into his own. Like in season one, it made sense. Harrison Wells was giving him all the pointers. Harrison yep. Wells was experienced while he wasn't. You're right, but you're every right. Se- every season since then, it slowly became more and more annoying. Why does Barry not know what he's doing at this point? Why is he always taking advice from others? Why can he not come up with any of his, the plans on his own? And why is he in the field always having somebody in his ear? It really, really is highlighted by a show like Superman and Lois, where when Superman goes out into the field, he knows what he's doing. He never has anybody in his ear telling it's him what to do. It's a damn good point. He knows what he's doing. And, yeah, and he has like 13 years damn good point. of experience. Wow. But I don't think 20 versus 7 is really that big of a, uh, of a difference, especially everything that Barry's gone through in the last seven years. He should know what he's doing. He should be the one who's the leader. He should come up with the plans, but he just doesn't. And it really, really bothers me. It's always bothered me, like, ever since season, like, three or four. He wow. He should have started doing this. But he's, they just they can't get away from the same formula that, that, that they had in season one which is so dated for how many seasons we are into the show. This is also highlighted not only by Superman and Lois, but also by the second episode of Season 7, The Speed of Thought, which is easily the best episode so far, where Barry unlocks the ability speed thinking and finally starts acting like he should. Uh, There is the emotional detachment, but I don't think the emotional detachment needs to happen with the speed thinking, and they can just remove that and keep the speed thinking. He just has to learn how to master it and be an emotionally attached person. But with the speed thinking, he finally starts acting like he should. He's a genius. He's the one coming up with the plans. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to manipulate his powers so that he can really win and defeat anybody super easily. Oh, that lame ass shit. He really felt like the Flash. He felt like a powerful meme character. Yeah. But then they just yeah. took it away at the end of the episode because of the quote unquote emotional detachment. Which is like, I mean, come on. They finally hit the mark with how Barry should act and how he should be the Flash. And then they just threw it away. And the rest of the season, he starts acting again how he did previously where he doesn't know what he's doing, which so pisses me off. (laughs) Now, both of those things are also (sighs) technically true for other seasons. Like, it is the worst ever in Season 7. The supporting cast has never been this bad. And Barry not being at his best has also never been as annoying. But there's one thing that is really exclusive to Season 7, which are the awful storylines that yep. they chose to go with. Yep. It starts with the Mirror Monarch ending storyline, which is Corona. They weren't able to finish the last three episodes, or yeah, three episodes I think it was, so they put it here. But uh, I think that it is also connected to Season 6B. It's all just awful. Mirror Monarch was a terrible villain. But getting into Season 7 itself, what was supposed to be the first half of Season 7, the the Force Quest storyline, I mean, anybody who's watched it knows how awful it was, how cringy it was, but, I mean, it's a storyline that was bad in the comics, so I don't understand why they wanted to <laughs> adapt it. I remember reading it when the comics initially came out, I think it was like a little bit after the Godspeed storyline, like maybe like a couple months later or like a year later or something, but I remember reading it and thinking that this is like the worst the Flash comics have ever been. I read the entirety of the Flash run from the New 52 till Rebirth and then after Rebirth as well. So basically all of it. And the Force Quest, I can say, is easily the worst thing that the comics have done in the entirety of that run. Which is wow. like, like 10 years really? of comics. And it's just really Barry going around the world, finding these like avatars of, of these the Forces, and then going up against them individually. Which, I mean, it's not good in the comics, but somehow they made it even worse on the show by adding this family dynamic. Barry and Iris start considering the forces their children because they technically made them with the power of their love. Which is just, I mean, just that sentence is the cringiest thing ever. But the fact that they're calling All right, we're going to stop. I'm going to come back to this. We're going to make a part two because I actually do want to set up and get ready for Loki. But I can't, I want to focus on what this dude is saying. So we're going to make it a part two. But there's something I'm going to say because... I, I didn't know anything about the Forces storyline, um, but I later I heard that it wasn't so well received, though other fans did kind of like it, uh, whatever. But from what was explained to me on Variant comic, comics and such, the concept, 
the ideal concept behind it seemed kind of interesting. And I feel like the comic book storyline where it gets out of hand toward the end, the beginning part of it, if I remember correctly, it happens right after the Flash War. Um, the beginning part of it sounded pretty damn cool, like having these avatars of the Speed Force. And I completely agree. Somehow the television version made it even worse, making it surround around Dominic, Dominic where you at? Family, right? And it's just like, what the hell, man? And it, it just, it th from that point, it just became this horrible Power Rangers-ish type writing um after um we stopped recording for patreon a little bit earlier we i actually brought up some power rangers episodes and showing them what i thought about when you see all these uh, like people in costumes and how it has very similarities surprise surprise the power ranger stuff looks better developed and better shot and better directed and better uh like pacing with the storyline it's wild man and that's for kids Stay tuned for part two, and we'll get back to that. Black Line, make sure you check out Black Line's entire video on his channel, and I'll do part two a little bit later, but it's time for Loki, baby. Let's go. Peace.